Hey, what's going on guys? So there are some really cool reptile shops across the country and here in Dallas, there is a really cool one. This is the Serpentarium. I am with Catalia once again. Hi guys. And we are gonna take a tour of the Serpentarium, see some of the coolest herbs that they have here. So, are you ready to take a tour? Yes, I'm so excited. Let's go take a tour of the Serpentarium. Let's go. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So look at this cat, they actually put out a reserved parking spot for us. I know, how cool are we? We are cool, this is cool, this shop is cool, we're about to go tour it. But, uh, yeah, not G-H, that's uh, K-A-U-F, as in fail. <laughs> oh, well, that is just super cool. I love it. I'm, ta I'm taking this and framing it. Okay, but I want it. Well, there's two of them. There's one on the other side for you. Yay! And one, oh, there, there we go, there we go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> F as in failure. <laughs> awesome, all right, let's go in and tour this place. All right, so this is Joseph. You are the store supervisor here at the Serpentarium. I love stores like this that have taken the time and the energy to really make these cages aesthetic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, that's, we actually, you know, each employee tries to put in their own little flair uh, with each enclosure. We call it like, we try to set up five-star enclosures. Cause you know, nice. if, if, if customers or people, you know, you're just gonna come in and see how animals are being set up. You know, they should have the same idea at home. You know, you know, it's totally fine to have your minimalistic set up and do what you got to do. But you know, and providing the enrichment, providing them UVB, even though ball pythons technically don't need it, it we've seen the difference in activity and their overall experience Absolutely. being kept here. You know? Absolutely. So. No, that's great. All right, so we're gonna start at this end of the shop. Sounds great. We're gonna work our way down. Cool. We're gonna meet some really cool reptiles. Then we're gonna work our way back up the aisle over there. Let's start right here. Look at this Burmese python. Yes, it's a hypo is that is beautiful. A, yep, this is a hypo Burmese python. But yeah, no, super pretty, gorgeous. We actually used to have, I believe like over 12 of these guys. Really? Yeah, we had a lot and as you can tell, we only have three left. So these guys have been with us for a minute, but you know what? They're all finding their homes eventually. And anytime a, a reptile finds a home, we also go through all the care instructions as needed with that person you know, ensure that they, you know, all their I's are dotted and all their T's are crossed. You that know? is really just, fantastic. We always want to make sure, you know, we're not just here to, you know, just make profit off of animals, right? We're just, we're here to ensure that all animals are living the best life they can, no matter what. They're pets. Look at them. You know, these are pets. At the end of the day, these these are family members. You know? I couldn't so. agree more. All right, so let's continue our tour here. We've got some California king snakes over yes. here. It's really cool to see colubrids, cool. you know, really becoming more and more popular. That uh, striped albino uh, California king snake is really cool. One of the biggest things that strikes people's eyes is when they see the pattern itself. They're like, well, what is that? You know? Right. So, so you've got Burmese pythons over here. You've got a catalia over here. You've got king snakes and other colubrids. But down here, I see one of my favorite boas. I have one of these That's right. Colombian rainbow boas, leucistics. Uh, we have got to take a look at this guy. Oh yeah, heck yeah. Here's a Colombian leucistic rainbow boa. Now with these rainbow boas so far, the only leucistics found in rainbow boas are the Colombians. The mm -hmm. Brazilians, we don't have a leucistic form. The Argentines, we don't have a leucistic form yet. So far it's only the Colombians that have a leucistic form. 
And that's one of the most fascinating things about reptiles in general, you know, you never know. There might be some sort of breakthrough, some sort of oddball, and then it turns into something crazy. So, <laughs> Cap, your favorite hog nose is the tricolor. Yes. But look at this enclosure. We've even got orchids in here. That is so cool. That's very pretty. All right, we got to take a look at this tricolor hog nose. Yes. Look at this guy. I've never seen one that's completely covered in... And you can see a little bit of the red distinguished on their head. So these hognose snakes basically come in two different color forms. There's the black and white one like this one, and there's also black, white, and red banding, kind of like a milk snake. But these hognose snakes actually come from South America. They are not related to the hognoses that we all know and love here in North America, but they have kind of a small range in South America. They're only found in Argentina and Paraguay and the surrounding area. But man, these are some of the coolest hognose snakes out there. And that's part of the thing that makes them super popular, right? Is that little shovel nose they got. That's so right. So cute. So we're gonna leave uh, Christy to redesign this enclosure. This is gonna be like a move that bus type of remake, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Remodel. I don't watch Switch that show. It up a little bit. I just know move the bus from. I don't know. Maybe they had it on Family Guy. I don't know, but I don't watch that show. But we're gonna leave Christy to redesign this enclosure. We're gonna turn around and look at this big dude. That is a good looking reticulated python and we are gonna get him out. So I have a super dwarf at home that has a massive food response and we are tap training them. Um, yeah, but this is a gorgeous snake. Look at this And he is beauty. actually a uh, super dwarf cross as well. He is 37.5% uh, Kalatoa. Pet snow, and then the rest of him is just good old mainland. Fantastic. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so now is. how old is the snake? He is coming up on three years old. Three years old, that's yeah. how old Mar ours is, yeah. So if you look at the snake from the back of the head to about one third down, you'll see that the diamond shaped patterns or the saddles are kind of jumbled, they're pixelated, and that is one of the basically diagnostic features of a super dwarf. If it wasn't a super dwarf and it was a mainland retic, it would have those diamond patterned saddles, whatever you want to call them, all the way up to its head. All right, so we've seen the retic, we've seen the snakes now down these two aisles. Yes. You have some really cool stuff down here. I see That's some right. frogs on this side and some lizards on this side, but look at these cute little dudes right here. These are the coolest little frill dragons. So these are the ones from Indonesia, yeah. you can tell because of the coloration. Yes, yeah. The Australians uh, would have much more orange, it's, even at this young age. That's right. So these are the Indonesians. Look at that, he just jumped right up on my finger. Look at how amazingly awesome this is. I wanted to get him to frill and he just, oh, well, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah. He's like, never mind. And that's one of the things too, right, is, you know, wild versus captive bred, right? You see a change in attitude for sure. Oh, you know, absolutely. Look at these guys. These guys are as young as they can get, and yet, look at them. You're right. It went right onto your finger, no problem. Yeah, this would not happen in the wilds of Australia. And the ones that I found in Australia, never in a million years would you get one to do this. That's part of the thing too, you know. Um, you know, with reptiles, you go, you're going to get on. some guys that may or may not be the most inclined to handling. Right. Um, but with our employees working through these guys every single day, taking care of their humidity levels, their water bowls and whatnot, feeding them and taking care of them, is, you know, that's the opportunity to get them used to being interacted with Absolutely. humans. Absolutely. So that you your know. customers are going to get a relatively tame animal and you know again it just also decreases the stigma of like oh my gosh like these scaly things are so mean it's like exactly that is not true at all that exactly. is not true at all couldn't agree more all right very cool frillies let's see what's over here this is a very cool enclosure that you built that's right yes so um in here is an amazon milk frog and we figured we'd go ahead and set up a really nice paludarium type enclosure for them that you know that's one of my favorite parts about this about keeping reptiles is setting up enclosures like i love setting up bioactive all that that's stuff, half the fun know? of keeping them exactly just so. hang on a second real quick while you're opening that cat say paludarium three times fast how fast do i have to say it just fast that's not saying it three times fast <laughs> paludarium 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 all right all right good 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 all right <laughs> now we, we can look inside yes yeah, so as you can see in here is a you know one of the zoom ed waterfall kits it's hard to see, you know, that's part of 
the fun about it is kind of configuring the the ins and outs you know of the how the how the water works because sometimes you'll run into certain difficulties as well when it comes to adding a water feature you know the pump may get clogged or you know it's not running the right, right. way so it did take a minute to get the setup but hey you know what the payoff is tremendous absolutely look at that we've got the water reservoir the water down there, below that's right. and i and i love how this is a waterfall on the wood it's uh -huh. not like some kind of cheap looking rock molded yeah, no. wannabe. What am I saying, Kat? A <laughs> rock with mold on it? Adorable. We have this little guy oh, right here. He's got this whole condo all to himself. Oh, he's so cute. He yep. has no clue how good he has it. I know. And, he, and you know what? Just like with any other reptile, no matter how much time you spend on it, they stay on that exact same spot. And, yeah, absolutely. Do they explore? I'm sure they do, but... I'm sure at night he goes around. Yeah, and, but, but daytime, right back to it. All right, so over here, we have Autumn, who is going to get out one of the coolest lizards, a monkey-tailed skink. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, like these monkey-tailed skinks right now are between... 500 to a thousand dollars before the Solomon Islands closed their uh, exportation of these you could buy these things for maybe 30 bucks Really? yep all right so autumn tell us about your little friend there so this is a prehensile tailed skink otherwise known as a monkey tailed skink or a Solomon Island prehensile tailed skink. Uh, they are from the Solomon Islands. They're actually one of the only reptiles that uh, you can successfully cohab because they are very, um, they have a very like family-like structure and how they um, exist. And they actually, um, they give live birth um, and they'll actually carry for nine whole months, wow. just like a human being, so. And they'll actually, uh, they'll raise their young as well. And um, they're a super tight knit uh, little group of uh, animals. So what do you guys feed yours? So this one is uh, completely herbivorous, meaning it is going to eat uh, like leaves. Sometimes we'll give them tortoise pellets for extra protein. They can eat those? Yeah, as well as uh, some fruits, veggies, and all appropriate supplementation, of course. Now, you're wearing gloves because they have pretty sharp claws. Very they are arboreal lizards, which means yes. that they will have sharp claws to hang onto those trees. That's right. Yes, they are daggers, to say the very least. You call them pretty cougar claws. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. And because they are arboreal, we can't clip those nails because they're very important to uh, their well-being. Exactly. It'd be like dew clawing a cat, basically. I just love these lizards. <laughs> They're so cool. Do you love these lizards, Cat? Absolutely. You love these lizards, Cat? Yeah. You love these lizards? Oh, okay, yeah. I love these lizards too. <laughs> all right, so Cat, we all know that you love lychees. I do. I film them too much, I think. I don't think there is such a thing as filming them too much. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> so this one in particular is from Pine Island. It's a Pine Island locale. And when I was in New Caledonia, I was on Pine Island where we saw these in the wild. These are my favorite locale of lychees by far. All right, Kat, we got you your lychee fix. Yep, but are I you... didn't buy him yet. Well, <laughs> I'm sure you can find somebody's credit card. And... Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Like yours. Okay, we're moving on down here to the tortoises that we got down here. And this is a really awesome hingeback tortoise. So kind of explain to us why it's called a hingeback. So Dave, if you look at the shell, very differently shaped compared to other tortoises. Correct. You know, so that's part of what makes them so unique is see how compared to this, compared to maybe like a red sulcata, it's more like flattened rather than, uh, you know, very round compared to a sulcata. So over here, they also have a bunch of inverts and Kat is going to film that for her channel. Yes, yes I am. So if you want to see the inverts that are here, pop on over to Catalia's channel. I have put her link in the description below. She is this close to 100,000 subscribers. Guys, pop on over there. Let's get her over that 100,000. All right, so you guys really have some amazing reptiles here. Really amazingly awesome designed enclosures. But you told me that a lot of the employees are here that knew that we were going to be here filming 
and they brought their own personal pets to show off. That's right, yes. As soon as I said your name, um, people's eyes lit up, and they were like, can we bring our animals so Dave himself can see them? Oh, so, stop yeah. it some more. <laughs> so we got um, a few of us. That's you really know, our, awesome, though. Yeah, no, a couple of our ragtag team here went ahead and brought some of their animals uh, oh, just let's to see showcase. Them. Yeah, let's That's go and fantastic. check them out. So this is Drew, one of the employees here at the Serpentarium, and... And this is Pearl. This is Pearl. Look at that. She just had her charcuterie board with blueberries, papaya, some collard greens, mustard greens. She was nomming. Second largest tortoise species in the entire world. Aldabra tortoises will get anywhere from 600 to 800 pounds. The Fort Worth actually has the largest Aldabra tortoise in the world. Almost 800 pounds. Where? Fort Worth Zoo in Texas. Oh, we're going to go to the Fort Worth yes, Zoo. Very cool. All right, that's going to be on Animal Adventures and Cat's Channel. you got to check out that video. Definitely. We are going to meet, what did you say, the biggest Aldabra, Aldabra tortoise, tortoise in the world? Yes, sir. We are going to meet that tortoise in those videos, hopefully. And this is Christy, and you are the social media coordinator here, correct? Yes, is that your the title? Company, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. And what what's your pet here? So this is Marty Moon. He's a Mexican milk snake. He was actually surrendered here. Um he's 26 years old. 26 so, years old. Yeah. He's an old man. He's a wow. little blind, but he's very active for how old he is. Well, 26 is a very old age for a snake. But look at that. Rapid tongue flicks, very curious, very healthy, very alert. Wow, 26 years old. That is a very good looking snake. And you know, a lot of people really, you know, they have California king snakes, they have Honduran milk snakes. Not a lot of people have Mexican milk mm -hmm. snakes. That is really, really cool. Yeah, he's a handsome boy for sure. And Autumn here, who we met earlier, what do you have here? This is my giant Mexican Sicilian. Whoa! Yeah, his name is Johnson. Um, do I want to ask how he got the name Johnson? <laughs> I think you can, uh, you can make the inference. Doesn't it all be nice to have a penis? I also have another one, his name is Willie. Oh my god. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Um, all right, so tell us about Sicilians. So Sicilians, um, there are a lot of different types of Sicilians, but this one is the giant Mexican Sicilian. He is a mostly fossorial animal. Um, they are an amphibian, uh, so very similar to like salamanders and newts, except they're very much uh, worm-esque. Um, he's gonna eat all kinds of things like invertebrates and earthworms, just like any other, really just like any other amphibian. Um, and as they get bigger, they can actually eat stuff like pinky mice as That's well. Right. And they do get big. Yes, they're like four to five feet just about. Right, and what are you keeping them in there? Is that like uh, peat moss? Yeah, so it's a mix of um, premium millipede and isopod substrate as well as some cocoa peat to retain that moisture for them. There's a few things, a drainage layer as well. Sure. This is just his little travel container. Okay, like, so these can... are the coolest animals. I may need to do a video just on these guys. They're cool. Very, very cool. We've got a couple more employees here. What's yeah. your name? My name is Sonora. Son uh, I've been here for about uh, six months now, um, but uh, I'm actually off today, but I brought my babies with me. Uh, so I brought my Burmese python. She's about six months old around there uh, and already about over three feet. And awesome. Getting, getting pretty fat. Um, and then we also brought our newest baby ball python, our black pastel albino. albino. Um, and then we also have our inchy pastel. And this is python. your partner here. What's your name? My name is Vess. Hi. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. And what you got there? All right. So this is Carmilla. She is a inchy ball, uh, pastel inchy ball python. She has a mustache, which is adorable. Pastel <laughs> inchy. Yeah. Man, one of the one of the prettiest combos. <laughs> I, I really love, I mean, anything to do with Inchi, I just love. But that is a really good looking ball python. She's actually my emotional support animal. Um, I have a seizure disorder and there is no cure. She's the only thing that helps. So, is that right? Yeah. Actually, if I'm having a seizure, if you put her on my chest, I'll stop seizing. <laughs> so she, wow. yeah, she actually has saved my life. That so. is fantastic that this snake helps with that. So this is Lewis. You're a store lead here. What do you got? Uh, this is a uh, meatloaf, my Savannah monitor. Meatloaf, love yeah. it. I actually uh, rescued her um, here at the Dallas Serpentarium. We are a safe surrender site. 
Uh, um, so, I actually rescued her. Um, it seems the previous owners were actually uh, feeding them rodents with savanna monitors. Um, actually, one of the very few monitors you don't want to feed rodents. Right. Um, because they will often get what's called fatty liver disease. That's correct. Um, so, I put her on a diet. A year ago, she was three times the size. Wow. Believe it or not. Um, she's actually become a lot more active ever since. And she is very sweet and oh, loving. That, sweetheart. So, Kat, it was absolutely awesome to collab with you again. I love collabing with you. We have so much fun collabing. I always do. I love getting random shots of your face making funny facial expressions. Constantly. So I want to thank Kat for being in another one of my videos. It is always a blast to collab with you. Um... Uh, I can say something. Yeah, I didn't say. talk hardly. Yeah, okay. So guys, once again, Catalia's links are in the description below. Go check out her. Uh... <laughs> All right, here we go. One more time. Okay. So guys, the link to Catalina's YouTube channel is in... <laughs> said Catalina. Catalina? God damn it. Okay, one more time. So guys, uh, the link's to Catalina. So guys, the link to Catalina. So guys, once again, the link to Catalina's YouTube channel is in the description below. Go check her out. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet. Feed your reptile obsession. And rattle on.